everybody, this is Etho, and welcome back to another episode of our Let's Play series. And we are starting off today at the Goon Farm. We've been working hard on this the last couple episodes. Uh, it's our golden iron farm here, so the iron golems spawn on the platform here. They fall down, then they fight the pigmen below. And we get iron, we get gold, and it's wonderful. <laughs> so we're not actually going to be working on this today. No, no, no. We actually got it finished now, basically. I just wanted to show you a couple tweaks we made to it since the last episode here. So I added some lanterns uh, under the glass. This is to stop gas from spawning on this platform. Uh, if I was to rebuild this, I'd just lower the glass by one. That would do it as well. But every five blocks, I just put a lantern. And something I didn't know. Apparently, they made a change not too long ago where torches can stop zombie pigmen from spawning. Like uh, a light level of 12 or higher. So I spammed this platform with torches, and now we don't have to worry about zombie pigmen spawning. So that's pretty cool, and check this out, it's definitely doing its job here. We got so much iron. Like when we started building that, we had like none. <laughs> and I've hardly even used it, it feels like, and we got like eight stacks just sitting here. Lots of gold as well. We even managed to finish off that nether tunnel we built to the Crimson Keep. All the power rails are down there now. Since the last episode, I've been doing a bunch of organizing again as well, even around the man cave here. You might remember, like, the last 20 or 30 episodes even, I've had shulker boxes just lining this path. <laughs> in the storage room, in the smeltery, I've had boxes and stuff all over the place. I think that's something everybody struggles with in the game now. You just put down a shulker box, and then you run out of space, you make a new one, you put that down, and you just, you just pile them up, right? Uh, not anymore! They're gone! Where did they go? Did I give them to Uncle Leo? No, Uncle Leo doesn't have them. You actually saw them. They're, uh, they're just up here now. <laughs> I mined out the roof in here and, and dyed them light gray and stuck them up there. Okay, so I want to take a moment to show you guys my new ender chest system. So I pulled all my shulker boxes out of here. This is basically my main storage room, my ender chest, right? Um, I just got to refill it every so often. So I've spent a bunch of time reorganizing, getting things super nice here and i'm so happy with it <laughs> so you might want to copy this and i'll just show you how it works so we got fences for one shulker box this is every fence and wall in the game plus iron bars i put in there then we got a slabs chest a stairs one and then there's a few slabs and stairs beyond that that don't fit into a single one so i put those combined in another one here the stairs and slabs I got a light work box here. This is pretty much all the lighting options you might want to use, plus all the workstations in the game. Uh, then we got a flower pots shulker box. I'm missing ferns, apparently. That's what I wanted to put here. Uh, but this has flower pots, all the things that can go in them. A couple bone blocks there, because a lot of times when you're out uh, doing things, you want some bone meal. And it, it really stinks if you don't bring it with you. <laughs> then this is the rest of the plants, plus some of the other ones that can go in flower pots, like the fungi, that wouldn't fit in here. But I thought they looked, looked pretty good next to the other nether plants, so that made sense to me. Uh, then I got an aqua kit. So this is coral, turtle eggs, lily pads, seagrass, prismarine blocks. Uh, this is my sandbox, so that's all the glass in the game, plus all the sand types. All in a box. Then the nether stuff. Oh, look how look how orderly that is. I love it. <laughs> this is my money chest. So this is all your val valuables. Redstone box. Probably missing a couple things in there. Clay box. Terracotta. Uh, it's my stone box. I like to put a stone cutter in there because a lot of times uh, I don't have one around. Uh, wool box. Concrete. This stuff needs a bit of reorganizing. I'm about 80 or 90% done, though. This is just all for logs and trap doors. Uh, odd blocks. There's probably a few I'm missing here, like honey, I know. And then dirt. And I can pretty much store all the items in the game in my ender chest now with that system in a pretty orderly way, I think. If I was to ask you to find Drearyville in my world, do you think you could do it? Do you think you could find it? Honestly, I'd be surprised if you knew what Drearyville was, even. <laughs> So let's go check something out here. Just a little thing. Whoa, I passed it. This is our clay mining outpost over here. This is where I get all our terracotta from. Uh, let's go through the portal. So I added in a path here to find Drearyville a little bit easier because it, it was up above here somewhere and even I didn't know where it was really. So I put this path in now. Whoop, we can go up and we got a bit of a dirt road here. We can look out at the mountains. 
over here. We go up the stairs. And then the stairs. And then the stairs. <laughs> There's a lot of stairs. And then finally we reach, we reach the top here. And this is Drearyville. Aha. You guys remember this place? We like never come here. It's not really that important to our world. But I thought like if people are exploring, they might want to check it out. You know? Now they'll be able to find it, hopefully. I also added in a bypass button over here. This is to trigger the Drearyville catastrophe instead of having to go through the Rube Goldberg machine, which I never finished. <laughs> this will trigger a minecart that goes down the path here and, and then starts the whole show. But uh, anyways, uh, let's get to it here. So today we're going to be working on the Crimson Keep. Uh-huh. <laughs> so I got a lot of ideas with this thing I still want to try out. Uh, a couple things you guys suggested as well. So for one thing, I would eventually maybe like to get a Piglin village built around here. That's that's for down the road though. Like this land over here, it'd be cool if we built a bunch of small houses and some kind of town sort of thing. And instead of filling it with villagers, I want to fill it with piglins though. I like that idea. Uh, so you guys suggested down here I should put like a strider stable. I love that idea because it's like down at the lava and we can make it pass underneath the bridge. Ooh, ooh yeah. Probably not getting to that today either though. <laughs> We're going to be working on the inside mostly, but I did want to do one thing you guys suggested with the bridge. You guys seem to like the bridge, except for the bottom here. You said I should bulk it up a little bit, and I, I agree. I think we're going to replace the basalt with some crimson wood. This shouldn't burn from the lava, right? Pretty sure. Uh, then, I think we will put some walls down. This is really hard to build <laughs> in the lava. I think we're going to have some walls to bulk it up a bit. And then below and on top of that, we'll put the salts. Yeah, this is like actually impossible. Wow, I thought I was gonna just build this real quick on camera and <laughs> I can barely move in this thing or see. This is wonderful. Uh, but yeah, kind of like we did at our doors. Same exact sort of style. We put that on top and then more walls running up. And then we'll probably put another piece of this basalts like up over there. And I think that should look pretty cool. Okay, well, we definitely bulked up the legs quite a bit here. Maybe a little too bulky now. But I think I might leave it like that. I'm not sure. I think ideally what I would like to do is space these another two or four blocks apart from each other. Like additional to what we have right now. And then keep the same legs. But I don't really want to rebuild the bridge, <laughs> so we might just leave it like this. I'm not sure. Anyways, I think it's about time we head inside the Crimson Keep. So our goal is to renovate this place and like try to uh, bring it back to its original state, right? So we don't actually want to change too much of the design if possible. Uh, just where we absolutely need to, or if anything looks really out of place. So I noticed there's a room over here, like... a sort of a cage structure sort of thing with some fire on top of nether rack and then there's a hole up there and a, a piglin or two <laughs> trying to kill me it's very dangerous in here right i don't really want to wear gold armor i think i'm gonna stick with the the diamond stuff while i'm working around here so what i thought would be cool is maybe we turn this into our beacon right we got the two by two with the fire maybe re we re upgrade that right where the fire is let's let's make that our beacon blocks maybe we'll do a two by two then i'll build the probably an iron pyramid for right now and later we might change that to gold we got the beacon pyramid built here but it's not working the beacons aren't shining i think because we got some black stone above here i might just need to replace them again for them to figure it out let's see if that does a trick Huh? Huh? No. Might be the nether warp blocks here stopping it. Maybe. No. This is the nether rack? I thought it could shine through nether rack. Or did I get that wrong? <laughs> I never build beacons down below. I always put them on the roof. I thought uh, they made it so it could shine through nether rack, though. I guess not. We're gonna go for the full deal here. Haste 2. We want... Resistance, for sure. Resistance 2. Do we want speed 2? But we'll try it out. And then finally, we'll go for strength and regen. 
And with that, it should be much easier to work around here now. Uh, unfortunately, that beacon base does stick out quite a way, so we'll probably want to wrap the black stone around and underneath it. Uh, but let's try to figure out how we're actually building here before we do something like that. So looking around, block pellet, what do we see? We see a lot of black stone and a lot of basalt. And that's about it. We have some orange with the lava. In general, though, these structures have nothing for the eyes to focus on. They're very bleak. It's black stone floor, walls, and ceiling, pretty much, <laughs> with basalt mixed in randomly. Um, so I think the biggest improvement we can make to this place right off the bat is to put in different materials for the floor. So we're going to get rid of the basalt and black stone floors here. And I've messed around with a few different things here. I found I really don't like brown mixed with basalt and, and blackstone too much. And since we're calling it the Crimson Keep, I thought let's try pick a red block for the floor. So I tried a couple different things here. This looks too clean to me. This looks okay, but it's kind of dark and it's got a bit of a purple tinge to it. So I actually think the best floor we could pick is the Nylium. As strange as that it might be. <laughs> so we're going to replace a lot of the floor here with Nylium. Um, it kind of gives like a royal carpet kind of feel to the place I find. We're going to have to do something about the spawner very soon. <laughs> it's driving me crazy. Uh, but yeah, I think I like this Nylium a lot actually. I think it's pretty cool. Huh? Look at this. This feels pretty good to me. We have the option of bone mealing it too if we want. I'm not sure if we want to do that. But it's an option. Oh, actually, another thing we could do with this is just break up a couple pieces every now and then and mix in some crimson wood just to add a bit more texture to it as well. And rather than farming the Nylium, all we got to do is put down Netherrack and then bone meal it to spread it. Oh my goodness, I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. <laughs> okay, we're dealing with that spawner. That was almost a death right there. We don't actually want to break the spawner, though. It's producing tons of these magma slimes, and that's free magma cream. Yeah, 2x2 two two magma cream, I believe, makes magma blocks, so... Yeah, it's not a bad thing to have running. Um, the way I see it, we only really have two options. These guys are actually really hard to kill, because they don't take fall damage, and they don't take fire damage. So what do we do with them, right? <laughs> uh, you can move them with lava, so that's one option can move them around and out of this area. I think I just want to kill them as soon as possible. So I'm going to put down some Nylium. And then I think we'll do Wither Roses on top of this. Oh, we can't put Wither Roses on this stuff. Really? Okay. Change of plans. Can we put it on... I doubt it. It it's, might be able to go on uh, Netherrack, though. Actually. Okay. Okay. We got our answer. So I believe that kills these guys. Yeah, okay. And then we just run a minecart under that. Hopper minecart to pick up the drops. I think we're going to mine out some of this nether brick as well. It's in the way. Okay, so we got a bit of a decision to make with this. I think ideally you would want to have an 11 by 11 room for spawning these guys in. But we might only go 9 by 9 actually. Because if we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 blocks from there, we're going to have to start tearing down some of this black stone and, and bust up the natural design of our structure <laughs> which i don't think we really want to do uh but like if a big slime tries to spawn here and we got a wall i think that might cause it to fail then and you'll probably get a little bit less cool so we got a bit of a cage set up for these guys we got glass around it and it's just a nine by nine and i don't have enough wither roses to fill the whole thing so i just put it around the edges and a bit in the middle and that seems to be killing them pretty quickly though just as it is now we got to run a minecart track under that for the hopper minecart, so that is tricky to install. <laughs> I'm going underneath the nether rack, and I like bust it open, and then lava pours in my face, and I put it down a couple blocks, and then hopefully get rid of a bit of it. Okay, so we got the track installed here. This is where it starts, and it zigzags its way down there, and then wraps around the end, and then bounces back and comes through the zigzag over here. So we got to build some kind of unloading station and storage system over here for the magma cream. So I'm going to put down probably just uh, three double chests of space starting here. There's lava all around here, by the way. <laughs> you can see outside. Oh, maybe you can't see outside, but that's the bridge out there. So we're at the, the very edge. 
Um, we're gonna put down some hoppers. Boop, boop, boop. Into the chest, and then one more over here. Then, this is where we're gonna do the unloading right here. I think we just need a comparator, then a redstone torch. That'll go to a piece of redstone up here, and that'll stop the minecart if it has any items in there. Here it comes, and it stopped. Very good. Uh oh. <laughs> I don't know what happened. So while I was building this, I wasn't really watching things. I see some magma slimes jumping around outside of the glass, and I don't know if they like came from higher up in the structure and fell down in the in the lava here, or if somehow these guys are spawning outside. We'll have to watch it a bit more. Maybe we need to expand our area. But yeah, I, I just set up some scaffolding to get down here right now. And this is our storage. All automatic. Should be good. Anyways, I think we should get out of the nether for a bit here and change things up maybe. What do you think of my concrete maker here? Pretty fancy. <laughs> You know what we don't have in our world yet is a concrete maker, I just realized. Like, we have one, but it's a, a manual mine one. I would kind of like to set up a TNT one. So I've been thinking we should make the most ultimate, amazing concrete maker. Yes. Alternatively, though, we could just make Ethos janky concrete maker. <laughs> Oh yes, that sounds more like it. So it's been a while since we did any projects in the man cave and we want this thing covered up. We don't want to see it. It's it's going to be pretty janky. <laughs> so I thought we would put it over here actually. I've been looking around and I found a skeleton spawner over here. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So maybe uh, we could sort of take advantage of that as we're making concretes. Not today, we'll, we won't set that up today, but maybe eventually this would be an odd number over here. Yeah, okay, this is going to be our spot right here. This is where we're going to stand to make concrete. Uh, this is level over here. Maybe we should go down a couple blocks to change up the terrain a bit too. All right, let's go down at least one, maybe two. All right, everybody, so we got a bit of an area cleared out here. I think we need like a 15 by 5 by 6 tall area, roughly, maybe a little bit more than that. But uh, this should be pretty close. Um, anyways, let's get started on building this thing. So, <laughs> the backstory behind this is, uh, like, I do actually know how to make a good concrete maker, but we're making this janky one just because I love it so much. Uh, I was messing around in creative the other day, and I got to thinking, I wonder if I could use the note block smart piston trick to create, like, a weird concrete maker. And... I messed around with it for a bit. I wasn't sure like how it would work, how it would function, all that kind of stuff. And it ended up working actually pretty decently. And it's among one of the easier concrete makers to build, I would say. So I kind of like it. Okay, so yeah, we build these note block smart pistons like this. Doo -doo -doo -doo. And because concrete changes the note on the note block, when we put it there, it actually activates. So all of these are smart pistons. So then we take our smart piston thing here and we stack another one right on top of it. And I just realized it's actually seven blocks wide and not five. <laughs> so at the note block level here, we go out four blocks on the side. I think we can use glass for this, but we'll find out, I guess. Um, and then we're going to put water right in front of these note blocks. And we do that up here as well for these note blocks. You can see I made a bit of a glass holding area for it. There we go. All our water's in. Okay, so check this out. This is the fun part now. We just spam our concrete powder in here and it kind of builds itself. Doo -doo 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 -doo. And you see once one of them fills up, the next one goes. And it passes underneath the water there, which turns it to solid concrete. All right, that's totally full now. And now we're going to go up uh, three blocks here. I'm going to put two ladders on the side here for climbing up to this level. And we do the same thing. All right, so that's all done now. Next up, we're gonna do the redstone on this. So this is the pressure plate to trigger the device. And then I think we run redstone to a monostable circuit here, sticky piston, with a redstone repeater at one. Is it gonna wash away? It's gonna wash away, isn't it? I think we gotta put that there for right now. And then a trap door. Oh, <laughs> all right, and then we got to build some observers up from that. We got to go two up. Oh, it's going to get washed away. I know it. 
Another one on top, and then more observers going this way into a dispenser. This is where the TNT goes. And then two more observers going this way. Now we're free to remove this, I think. Whoa! Oh, did I say seven blocks wide? I meant eight, of course. I <laughs> forgot we got to put a hopper clock here. All right, let's get a hopper clock set up. So we're going to go comparators from the hoppers. Face the hoppers into each other. Double block. Double redstone. Sticky piston on the side with the observers. And then regular piston on the other side. Redstone block between. And we're going to go for six items in here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Bam. All right. And then it's probably a good idea to cover over this too. With a couple blocks so nothing falls in there. And then from the hopper clock, we're going to put a trap door. And I think we're going to want to jump in here actually just to make this easier. Put the observer next to the trap door. Then one, two, three, four, five pieces of redstone over top of that. And then from here, we take another observer and go up into a block into six pieces of redstone over the observers again. Now we're going to build the blast chamber and collection system for this thing. So we shave off the ends of these as far as the pistons will reach. Shave off the final blocks here and then either with obsidian or some other blast resistant block like crying obsidian. We're going to solid fill this. We also want to put obsidian above the second layer of the concrete here just to stop it from jumping out places we don't want it to. And then again we just cover the sides here. Four blocks from the end. And do a 4x4 thing. We got a two block gap here. We're going to fill that in with concrete to stop the water from flowing down. Uh, probably can load the TNT in here, but I'll have to be careful. <laughs> and then let's fill this two block gap as well. And now we're going to dig underneath here and start adding our collection system. Unfortunately, because I'm in the man cave, we got stuff kind of all over the place in our way. Crying Obsidian actually looks pretty weird, doesn't it? <laughs> it's almost like it's round. Like the dark areas look like they go in more. You see what I, you see that? It's almost like a bunch of dragon eggs stacked on top of each other to make a big dragon egg here. <laughs> uh, anyways, I put a bunch of crying obsidian around here as well. And then on the floor so that we, if we have an accident, it's not going to blow up the wiring below, hopefully. Um, now I'm going to punch these four blocks out. We're going to set up some hoppers into a chest. Both of them facing in, then these ones will go sideways into those. Then I think we're ready to put our water in. Awesome, so I think it's ready now. We're going to do some testing. Uh, I just want to point out one thing with this water. It actually does three different things, three different functions. It turns the concrete powder into solid concrete. It's also going to move the TNT, like the TNT is going to fall over here, and then it pushes it over to where there's no water and then the TNT explodes over there far enough away from the gizmos and stuff where they shouldn't break and then also the water will push any drops any of the concrete uh, that lands over here off into our collection system so that's pretty cool now we're looking for when we hit the button here we want the TNT to explode the stuff we want the stuff to go into the chest uh, but we also want this concrete powder to get moved over so that we're free to put new stuff there because right now it's like packed up it's full let's just hope all that happens you see the TNT moves over boom just making sure nothing got destroyed <laughs> uh looks like we're okay oh yeah and you heard the pistons fire afterwards so now this spot is free for new concrete powder so that's cool and now uh let's see what we got for drops 40 nine okay uh-huh so some concrete makers they can get over a hundred per tnt but let's face it those are show-offs we don't want to show off uh-uh fully automatic if cable concrete maker none of that garbage <laughs> we want the manual do it yourself so we load up the top we fall down on the pressure plate and pretty much the time we finish it pops and then we go back up we climb the ladder Ideally, you don't want to be moving your mouse around. And ideally... Oh, how am I going to feed myself more powder is the question. I didn't think about that. Anyways, this is kind of how it's supposed to function. <laughs> it's pretty janky. I love it. Uh, we go up, we go down. We hit the pressure plate. Get the next one going. Run out of concrete powder. <laughs> uh, anyways... 
It's kind of cool. I liked it. We actually do have quite a bit of space around here free still, so it is possible we could add a way of moving up and down automatically and refilling our concrete powder. Uh, but I'll have to think about how to do that if I really want to do it. <laughs> I don't know. I kind of like it the way it is, too. Uh, but anyways, let's get to the comment of the day, guys. It says, hey, Eth Etho? He didn't say, hey, Etho. They always say, hey, Etho. Hey, do you still like competitive Pokemon? If so, you should play Pokemon Showdown. It's the best way to play competitively. Would be fun to see. Aha. So I actually did... Like, back when I was playing Pixelmon, I did get into playing Showdown quite a bit. Um, <laughs> uh, my most fun in Pokemon, I made a troll team for Gen 7 just before it ended. It had a, a beat-up Weavile with a King's Rock. It had triple Scarf. Uh, Volcanion was Scarfed. I had Scarf Cartana and Scarf Kieran Black. The idea was, like, a bunch of heavy-hitting guys to really tone up the beat-up. <laughs> And then I had a Mega Metacham and a, Th a Landorus on the team. And it was meant to be a troll, but it did amazingly well. I got it to the top 100 at one point on Showdown, like 1850 in the ranking. And I had so many people raging in the, in the chat. It was amazing. <laughs> uh, so much fun with that. I did play Gen 8 a little bit on Showdown. Whoa! But uh, not as much. I haven't played in quite a few months now. Aw, so I just checked here. I couldn't find any replays for my Gen 7 team saved. Uh, I think they might have expired. But I did find a couple from my Gen 8 troll team. It wasn't nearly as good as my Gen 7 team, but it, uh, it had some fun too. <laughs> so I'll try to link those in the video description if I remember, and you can check them out if you want. But that is going to do it for today's episode, guys. So hopefully you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. Until the next time, take care. Have a good day. Bye-bye.